Good afternoon. This is Milton J. Cross, very delighted to be allowed to participate in this demonstration on television. For your delectation, uh, we draw on Harlem for that droll comic Eddie Green and his partner George Wilshire, offering a little philosophic erudition. I'm glad, I'm glad she is. I'm glad, you know, I can't stay with you, though. What's the matter? It's too hot and hard for me. I'm, I'm going somewhere where it's cool, right? Too hot? Yeah. Why don't you go to my home, boy? You got a, where you, where you? Nova Scotia. Go, no, you? Nova Scotia. Go away. It's cool there all the time. Oh, it is it? How cool do it get? Well, last winter it was so cool. It was actually 30 degrees below zero. The, below who, who Below is zero. Who is, who is, who is. That's the thermometer. Well, the thing, what goes Yeah, the <laughs> thermometer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know. That. You, is that cool? That's cool. Sure, it's cold. Oh, man. 30 below zero. Is that, that's spring where I come from. I'm telling you. Something. Where did you come from? Uh, you bet you never heard about, about Greenland. Oh, is that where you're from? I'm from there. Oh, boy, it gets cool. Let me tell you what happened. Last September, it's September. In September. In September. That's you know. the fall of the year. It ain't know. got cold yet. You're it, telling me. It just doesn't get well. Well, I, I, it was at night time when I was going up there. You know. Mm -hmm. I stepped out the back of the house one night with a lit lantern. You know what a lantern? Is. Yeah, one of them little old lamps. Was lit. With know? a handle. Yeah. I had to see my way out. I, I stepped out the back of the house with a lit lantern, and what you think happened? It was so cold till the flame froze on the lantern. I'm telling you. The, the flame. Thing. The flame. You know what I done then? Mm -mm. Broke off the flame and threw it up against the barn and forgot all about it. You're still talking about the flame. Talking about I forgot all about it. Yeah. Spring come and set, 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 set. It, it, it thawed out the flame and set far to the barn. I'm telling you. No, it thing. didn't. It, it didn't get cold yet, though. No. December gets chilly like that. Now you know. you're talking about the winter time now. Man, let me tell you what happened last December. Last December, I was I was hungry. Mm -hmm. I, I was I said, I'll get me some bear meat. Bear meat. I like bear meat. Mm -hmm. Oh man, I had my gun. And I started out. Wasn't gone two minutes. I stepped a grizzly bear. Mm -hmm. Oh man, I raised my gun and aimed it at him just like that, and then it come to me. I didn't have no shots in the gun. You didn't? Oh my goodness, man, soon as I realized that, the perspiration started pouring out on the forehead. Yeah. Soon as it struck the outside atmosphere, turned into little barrel of ice and dropped on the ground. The perspiration did that. That gave me an idea. Mm -hmm. Stooped down and got a handful of them balls and dropped them down. Yeah, the uh -huh. Man, I read it down. Yeah. Oh, man, I pulled up my gun and boom. Uh -huh. Off went the gun. The red hot powder turned that little ball of ice into a stream of water. The water come right out the gun. Soon it struck the outside atmosphere. It turned into an icicle. The icicle went right straight ahead and hit the bar smack in the middle of the forehead, penetrated his head, and it died with water on the brain. I'm telling you this. Say, Jerry, I got to go on all right for that one. Going, yeah, I'm hungry. I got to go on Lennox Avenue to the busy bee to get my supper. I'm going over there. Go to my grandfather's restaurant. Oh, your grandfather's too slow, man. Grand Tap is the fastest cook in the world, I'm telling you. No, that. he can't beat this place I'm talking oh, about. Don't tell me, he can't. The busy it? bee is the fastest restaurant oh, in Harlem. Man. Look here, no longer than yesterday. You know what happened? What happened? I went in there and ordered me a plank steak. Plank steak. You know what that is, don't you? On a piece of wood. I see it. Yeah. Go ahead. Plank steak. And in two minutes' time, the waiter had it on the table waiting for me. Two minutes? Two minutes. That's a local compared to Grandpa. No fooling. Grant, let me tell you what Gra Grandpa was cooking in the Depot restaurant in Chicago. Mm -hmm. Seventy-five actors were coming from Los Angeles to New York to make talking pictures. Mm. Had ten minutes to stop over in Chicago to get something to eat. Ten minutes. That's all they had, man. That's all. They rushed into the restaurant, rushed up to the waiter and hollered, have an egg. Just yes. a minute, just a minute. What's the matter? What's now, you say your grandpappy used right. to run a restaurant in the depot in Chicago. In the depot, right. Seventy-five right. actors were coming from Los Angeles to New York That's to make talking right. pictures. Was trying to get a job. Go the on. waiter man ordered 75 orders of ham and eggs. Everyone. 75 orders of ham and eggs. Oh, 
got ten minutes. To ten minutes to stay there. I'm telling you. Uh -huh. And Grandpa will just grab. I better scare him to death. Oh, right up. Sure. Oh, man. Listen, they didn't even scare the waiter. Grandpa was back in the kitchen smoking his pipe. The waiter just walked over to the kitchen door and he hollered in the Grandpa like this. He says, Have it eggs, well, 75. And what did your Grandpa say? He said, Take them away before I burn them. I'll see you later. You see you later. From the Radio City Music Hall, we have drafted a few of the sprightly Rockettes, presenting some new and intricate tap dancing as devised by Russell Marquette. Broadway show shop contributes our next gala feature, the distinguished actor, Mr. Henry Hull, in a scene from the sensational success, Tobacco Road. Mr. Hull portrays Jeter Lester, an old sharecropper who has been rendered poverty-stricken by the economic conditions of the last seven years affecting the entire cotton-growing belt of the South. A neighbor upbraids him for his poverty, and old Jeter replies in kind. Mr. Henry Hull as Jeter Lester. Ain't my fault, is it, if Captain John done shut down on giving me snuff and rations at the store? He moved off to Gus to living and died there. I worked for Captain John all my life. And I worked harder than any four niggas in this field, too. First thing I know, he come up here one morning. Told me couldn't be letting me have no more snuff and the rations at the store. Then they sold all the mules and moved off to Gus to live. Said he wasn't used trying to run a farm around here no more. Fifty plows or one plow. Of course, he told me I could stay here on the land as long as I like. But God ain't doing me no good. Ain't no work I can find to do for hire. Can't raise me a crop because ain't got no mule. Can't give me no credit. That's what I want to do, powerful, strong, really about now. Raise me a crop. When the winter goes, there comes time to burn the broom and sedge off the field. I saw I want to cry, I reckon it did. The smell of that sedge smoke this time of year near about drives me crazy. And then pretty soon, all the other farmers start to plow in. Doggone, that's what's the worst. The smell of that new earth turning over in the furrows behind them plows gets me all weak. Shaking. It's in my nature, I reckon. Burning broom said, plowing in the field. I've been doing it for near about 50 years now. My Paul, he thought for him was the same kind of men. Us Lester sure does like to stir up the earth and make things grow in it. Land's got a powerful hold, Tommy Love. Powerful hold. Of course, things, things weren't always like the years now, neither. Hell, I remember a time, a short while back, when all the merchants in Florida was tickled to death to give me credit. All of a sudden, Captain John done moved away. 
Make no voting, I know the sheriff come up here one morning. Took me about every bit of goods I possess. Get an old automobile and a cow. <laughs> Did they want no good? Said the automobile wasn't no good. And then said the old cow was so old she wouldn't take no freshening. I reckon you'd rate it that. Cause the, the automobile won't run. And the old cow, she done up and died. <laughs> That's the way things is, love. That's just the way things is. Not all Southerners are in the unfortunate predicament of Gita Lester. Success and fortune have crowned the efforts of the three little maids from the Southland you are next to see and hear. And when you do, I am sure you will agree that fortune would have been a silly jade had she neglected to reward the talents of the lovely Pickens sisters. Ago, at one of the most important benefits of the season, three of the more slender members of the Metropolitan Opera Company had themselves announced as the Chicken Sisters. They sang Minnie the Moocher. Now, in the spirit of good fun, we should like to give you our impression of three operatic singers at a concert.
loves his mother, like strawberries love cream, like an Italian loves bananas. That is how the radio audience loves Edwin and his stooge to end all stooges, Graham McNamee. Well, <laughs> I don't know what to say. This, uh, they asked me about a half hour ago to come on here. <laughs> So naturally, I didn't, uh, I didn't prepare anything. <laughs> the, uh, I don't know what to say. <laughs> Thought I should make a speech of some kind. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> in behalf of the National Broadcasting Company, <laughs> I'd like to be half of the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs> that didn't sound so funny to me, but I just thought of it. I, I feel privileged, ladies and gentlemen. Something annoying me there. It's, uh, that's silly. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I feel privileged in uh, being asked uh, to appear on the first real uh, television demonstration that the world has ever known. To me, that I, uh, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> well, I guess I'll go. Ed! Ed! That boy! Ed! That boy! Ed! I, <laughs> oh, Graham! Oh, my God! Oh, yeah. Hello, oh, Graham! Yeah. Pretty good. I'm so Pretty glad good. I was oh, just... No. Uh, Saying to some of the people here, you were. this television, yes. I don't seem to understand it. Uh -huh. The whole thing is so... They told me about a half hour ago. You mean to say you don't understand I, television? I never even heard the word well, about it. Well, for heaven's sake, Ed, I'll tell you all about it. Yes. Now, in television, you see, uh, we stand here and people see us in other places. Well, that's what uh, Miss Brainerd said. You see, said, what, I, but, see yes, what I mean? Yes. Now, Miss Brainerd knows all about television, too. She started it. Well, I don't and, know. Uh, I... But anyway, uh, Ed, uh, on, in television, everything yes. is, is opposite, crosswise. You know, cockeyed. And, uh, uh, for instance, uh, your left hand becomes your right hand. Your Pardon me, but uh, something <laughs> annoying. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ed, will you pay us some little attention uh, while I tell you about television? Now, Ed, yes. now, for instance, uh, you say you know nothing about it, but uh, I'm sure... Well, I, I, I don't believe you can even tell a left hand from a right hand, can it? Oh, well, that, of course, that's absurd. Uh, go ahead, Graham. Well, well all right. I don't now, know what's in your uh, mind. All right, I'll try it. Now, Ed. As long uh, as we're uh, ad-libbing, we may as uh, well ad-lib. <laughs> I mean, I don't... <laughs> Ed, uh, which right. hand... Uh, wh which, is it, which hand is that? See what I mean? What do you mean, which hand is it? Uh, which hand is it? Go ahead and tell me. Which hand, Ed? Your left. Your left hand. Uh, that's perfectly correct. Now, Ed, uh, which hand is this? Here. Which hand is that? <laughs> huh? I sounds so silly. What do you mean? Well, which one is it? Which hand well, is that? Huh? Well, I'll, wait a minute. I'll which is it? I'll work it out. All right. See, that's the one, two, three. 
And that's fifteen uh, percent off of the agent's commission. <laughs> I would say that's the right hand. <laughs> right. All, all right. right. Now that's correct. But yes. look here, Ed. Yes. Now, Ed. Now, all right. Now, see. Yes. Now, yes. Which hand is that? Well, that isn't fair. You mixed them up there. <laughs> <laughs> that isn't fair. Oh, all right. But that's the I'm way television goes, anyway. Oh, you mean you the, see, the yes. people see you? That's it exactly. Yes. Right. In fact, and yes. the idea of the demonstration is to show seeing that. I that, get it. that sounds yeah. pretty good. Yeah. I had a spade yeah. chain myself once. It took a, that took an awful long time. We're only supposed yes. to have five. Well, minutes. look here. Here, let's play the game. What's this? Oh, yeah. Do you know some of those? I, I know yeah. a lot of them. All right, let's see some of that. Well, now, wait a minute. Yeah. Here, go ahead. You, I'll, 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 well, wait, I'll put that there. That's fine. Here, uh, Graham. Yes. What's that? Really? You do that. What's that? I don't <laughs> know what is it. What is it? It's so silly. What is it? Oh, tell me what it is. I'm starving. Well, that's uh, an Indian driving a Ford V8. Okay, that's just to be yes, there. Yes. You did it that yes, way. We should have rehyped it. Well, what was it? <laughs> well, it's all right. <laughs> I got Here's a good one. Here's a good one. What's this? What Do that. Yeah, that's the cash oh. register. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, no, I make these up as right. I go along. All right, now make up another one. Well, there's not much sense to any of them. Yes, no. I, here, what's this? What's what is that? it, Ed? I don't know. What is it? The broken record. <laughs> <laughs> See? Yes. Yeah, that's very good. That's great. Right. I like that. I'm in another one, if you will. You think we're going to get paid for this, Graham? Uh, yes. To little or no extent. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know what else. Yeah. Do you like this? What's it? Do you I like love that it. Game? I love it. Try me on one more. Well, here. You? What's it? What's that? that? Yeah. I don't know, Ed. What is it? What is it? That's milking mice. <laughs> that's just not <laughs> Come on, Ed. <laughs> national defense, our military training system is built around the regulars, the backbone of our citizen army. Numbering less than 160,000 officers and men, our regular army, the smallest of any great nation, is the best in the world for its size and has kept pace with the machine age in warfare. Tanks are moving forts that advance with the infantry, crushing all obstacles. Covering the advance is the field artillery. Its support has won many a battle. The infantry needs protection from air raiders. Anti-aircraft batteries are the Army's anthem. Infantry is still the last word. The man behind the gun has not been displaced by the machine, and King Horse has not been dethroned. For even an up-to-date army must have cavalry like this to fight where machines are useless. Day and night, our army of men and machines keep trained to protect America, our best insurance against attack.
Our first television program for July 7th, 1936, has just been concluded. This is station W2XK, an experimental transmitter of the National Broadcasting Company. We have been operating on a frequency of 52 megacycles by authority of the Federal Communications Commission and are now signing off. Good afternoon.